So, yung Xiaomi 13T, bumalik sa 67 watts of fast charging. Samantalang itong Xiaomi 12T, ay capable na of 120 watts of fast charging from last year. So, paano naging upgrade to? Now guys, isa lang yan sa mga bagay na pag-uusapan natin tungkol dito sa Xiaomi 13T. Pero I'm here to tell you in advance na talagang nadismaya ako dito sa release ni Xiaomi pagdating sa series na to dahil parang hindi tayo binigyan ng tunay na upgrade kumpara sa last year. Pero pag-uusapan natin lahat yan at ibibigay ko sa inyo yung mga alternatibo kung sakaling hindi nyo rin talaga mapusuan itong Xiaomi 13T. Kaya panoorin nyo ng buo itong video pero bago ang lahat, eto muna yung quick unboxing. Simulan muna natin sa bagay na unang nadismaya ako and that is with its looks. So kumpara sa Xiaomi 12D series last year, makikita nyo na mas cute yung camera module na ginamit nila. Now, I'm gonna say guys that this is very subjective so you may or may not like the design ng Xiaomi 12D and you may or may not like the design naman ng Xiaomi 13T. Pero ako personally, hindi ko nagustuhan yung design dito sa Xiaomi 13T if you compare it with the Xiaomi 12D. Dahil napakalaki ng camera module niya and it makes no sense na ganito kalaki yung camera module na ginamit nila for this phone. Now, I do understand that they gave us major upgrades pagdating sa other two lenses na nilagay nila dito. So, meron tayong Sony IMX707 sa main sensor niya and then yung other two lenses natin. Meron tayong 50 megapixels na telephoto lens. That's a welcome addition and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. That is again a welcome addition kasi sawang-sawa na tayo sa 8 megapixel ultra wide and 2 megapixel macro lens na combination. So pupurihin ko si Xiaomi pagdating sa upgrade na to. However, may kasabihan nga na the proof is in the pudding. So dapat makita rin natin na tunay ngang maganda or tunay ngang may major improvement yung camera nito compared to last year or compared to something that also has the same camera sensor which is the Xiaomi 12 Pro from last year. So mamaya ipagkukumpara natin yung Sony IMX707 ng Xiaomi 12 Pro and nitong Xiaomi 13T. Tingnan natin kung nag-improve nga ba na merong Leica partnership yung Xiaomi this year versus the Xiaomi 12 Pro na walang Leica branding. Pero bago natin mag-usapan yung camera, unahin muna natin yung performance. So meron tong MediaTek Dimensity 8200 na chipset. Think of this as a boosted Dimensity 8100. So kung maganda yung performance ng MediaTek Dimensity 8100 na na-experience nyo before, well, expect to have slightly better performance pagdating sa MediaTek Dimensity 8200. And we've seen this from a lot of phones na nirelease na ni Xiaomi. So, nandiyan yung Xiaomi CB3, Redmi Note 12D Pro, Redmi K60e. So, this is a popular chipset. And again, ulitin ko, malakas po yung performance ito. Parang Dimensity 8100 na binoost yung performance. So, pagdating sa daily task, kung manonood ka ng YouTube, Netflix, or whatever na gusto mong gawin sa phone mo, Wala po tayong problema dyan. Pagdating sa gaming, dito natin masusubukan yung kakayahan ng MediaTek Dimensity 8200. Gaano nga ba kalakas? Now, just for quick reference guys, itong Poco F5 na merong Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2, kayang-kayang umabot ng above 1 million na tutu benchmark points. Sobrang CCO lang para dito. And mas mura to sa Xiaomi 13T. First off, eto muna yung tutu benchmark points. So umabot tayo ng around 800,000 ang tutu benchmark points. Pero syempre, kalahati lang po ng kwento yung tutu benchmark na yan. Ang tunay na test is sa actual gameplay. So simulan na natin with Genshin Impact at the highest graphical setting, 60 FPS. And you can see na consistent yung frame rates na makukuha natin around 50 to 60 FPS. 
wala gaanong major frame drops even if maraming effects na nangyayari dyan sa display natin. And since medyo na-explore ko na tong fountain area, makikita nyo na na-load up nyo na yung mga textures so hindi na tayo nagkakaroon ng random frame drops pagdating sa mga new locations. So I'd say kung hardcore Genshin Impact gamer ka, you will have a great time playing on the Xiaomi 13T. However, of course, pagdating sa heating issue, I would still highly recommend na gamitan nyo to ng fun cooler para mas maganda yung gaming experience nyo at hindi uminit gaano. Kasi pag walang fun cooler, expect to get about 45 degrees Celsius or higher depende kung gaano katagal na kayo naglalaro. Hindi siya kasing lamig nitong Poco F5 or ng Poco F5 Pro pagdating sa Genshin Impact. So kung Genshin Impact player ka talaga and gusto mo mas cooler pa talaga yung experience mo, These two are the ones that I would highly recommend. And paalala po sa lahat na lahat po ng legit na links nandyan po sa description box. So kung gusto nyo bumili ng Poco F5, F5 Pro, Xiaomi 13T, dyan nyo po makikita. But going back to the gaming performance, pagdating naman sa Farlight 84, kahit na nakasagad yung graphical settings natin, A very smooth pa rin yung gameplay experience and makikita nyo na consistent naman yung frames na makukuha natin with this device. Now, syempre paalala sa inyo na pag nakasagad sa extreme yung FPS natin for Farlight 84, eh di hamak na mas mabilis uminit yung device natin. So, asahan nyo na mag-shoot up agad sa above 40 degrees Celsius yung temperature na to. Kasi sa isang round pa lang, eh, umaabot na agad ng 41 degrees Celsius yung nakuha ko with Farlight 84. Pero pagdating sa lighter games like Mobile Legends, Call of Duty Mobile, eh, maning-mani lang po yan dito sa Xiaomi 13T. Again, very powerful itong MediaTek Dimensity 8200. And solid rin yung touch sampling rate ng Xiaomi 13T. Meron tayong 480 Hz na TSR. So, approved tayo dyan. So, pagdating sa gaming experience, wala naman po akong pagkakadismaya dito. This is, again, almost the same gaming experience that you can expect from the Xiaomi 12T. Susunod naman, pag-usapan natin yung display nito. So, meron tong AMOLED 144Hz refresh rate. It's a slight bump from the 120Hz from the Xiaomi 12T. But it's not really something that you would notice right away. Unless ganun ka-sensitive yung mata mo pagdating sa high refresh rate. Para sa akin lang kasi, when you enable 144Hz, you're just draining your battery faster. So, sapat na para sa akin yung 120Hz. Besides, wala namang mga games na available na at 144fps. So, hindi rin natin masusulit gaano yung 144Hz na refresh rate dito. But overall, the Xiaomi 13T has a great looking display. Of course, it's what you would expect from an AMOLED display and hopefully I'm crossing my fingers na hindi ito magkakaroon ng problema tulad ng Xiaomi 12T na merong mga green line issues. Pero yung mga naka Xiaomi 12T na merong green line issues or hindi pa nagkakaroon pero takot na takot na, pwede nyo pong ipaayos yan sa service center and it's covered. Pagdating naman sa panonood ng Netflix, wala pong problema dito dahil naka widevine level 1 na, activated na agad yung Dolby Vision. So, you will have a great time watching your favorite shows or movies on Netflix. And kahit pa sa Disney+, Plus Full HD makukuha natin quality. Sa Amazon Prime, the same. And syempre sa YouTube, kung makapanood kayo ng content na merong HDR, it's already activated dito sa Xiaomi 13T. So overall, approved din ako para sa display nitong Xiaomi 13T. Susunod naman, siguro dito na yung biggest na pagka-dismaya natin. Dahil ito na, pag-usapan na natin yung camera. So again, sinabi ko na kanina, meron tong Sony IMX 707. The same sensor with the Xiaomi 12 Pro from last year. And ito na agad, side by side ng mga pictures na nakuha natin with the Xiaomi 12 Pro. And kapansin-pansin agad yung pagkamatingkad ng kulay ng Xiaomi 12 Pro kumpara sa Xiaomi 12T. At partida guys, naka-on pa yung Leica Vibrant dito sa Xiaomi 13T. Pero mas vibrant pa, di hamak yung kulay ng Xiaomi 12 Pro. Although makikita nyo dito sa picture ng pusa, nagmukha na siyang Garfield dito sa Xiaomi 12 Pro and you can definitely say na mas saturated nga naman talaga yung pictures dito sa 12 Pro but 
for me, mas i-upload ko agad yung sa Xiaomi 12 Pro and hindi ko na kailangan i-edit pa. Pero pagdating sa Xiaomi 13T, eh medyo i-edit ko pa yan bago ko i-upload sa social media. Pero kahit na hindi tayo mag-compare with other devices guys, you can definitely tell na medyo may kulang pa rin sa image processing na nilagay ni Xiaomi dito. And this is definitely highlighted lalo na pag low light scenarios. Pero surprisingly, pagdating naman sa night shots, eh very impressive yung makukuha nating shots dito. I guess mas nag-effort lang sila sa image processing ng night shots compared sa day shots kasi kung makikita nyo dito sa mga samples na nakuha ko and sa mga samples na nakuha ni Sir Brian, eh di hamak na kaaya-aya tingnan yung mga photos. Although, pag zoom in nyo na, makikita nyo na medyo may degradation na nawawala ng details yung quality ng photo natin. But overall, very good looking pa rin yung photo natin at night time. Of course, wag lang natin gamitin yung ultrawide or yung telephoto lens. Pagdating sa portrait shots, nakakadismaya rin kasi akala ko medyo nag-improve na si Xiaomi this year. Pero apparently, it's all the same. Hindi pa rin ganun kaganda yung edge detection nila. So yung fake bokeh effect nila, eh hindi pa rin perfect. I mean, kung papipiliin nyo ako with the Vivo V29 sa portrait shots, panalong-panalo yung phone na yon versus this one. So hopefully, Xiaomi puts more effort pa talaga sa portrait shots nila. Pagdating naman sa selfie camera, it's your typical Xiaomi affair. Hindi ganun kaganda yung shots na makukuha natin. Pagdating naman sa selfie video, nakaka-disappoint na wala tayong 4K 30fps at this price range. 1080p pa rin yung resolution and again, considering na yung Xiaomi CV3 merong 4K 30fps, why can't Xiaomi be consistent na ibigay sa atin kahit nasa upper mid-range lang, di ba, na 4K 30fps. Na on the brighter side, maganda po yung microphone na ginamit ni Xiaomi dito. I was surprised by the quality of the audio. So pakinggan nyo na lang po. Guys, ito naman yung sample natin ng selfie camera. 1080p 30fps. Yes, wala tayong 4K 30fps dito. Nakapanghinayang. Once again, Xiaomi CV3, meron pong 4K 30fps. Xiaomi, what are you doing? Sa rear camera naman, hanggang 4K 30fps lang yung kaya nating ma-record na video. And that's a shame because this one, the Poco F5 Pro, at almost the same price range, can record up to 4K 60fps. So, dagdag na naman to sa pagkadismay ako. Now, don't get me wrong, very decent po yung quality ng videos na masushoot natin with the 4K 30fps and also it's quite stable. Pero kung value kasi ng pera ang pinag-uusapan natin, yung features talaga na nilagay ni Xiaomi dito ay eh lacking compared sa Poco F5 Pro. And speaking of lacking guys, this one is lacking the 120 watts na fast charging na meron doon sa Xiaomi 12T series. Nakakainis that they had to downgrade yung charging speed nitong Xiaomi 13T compared to last year's 12T. So yun po yung mga bagay na ikinadismay ako dito sa Xiaomi 13T. Again, let's start with the looks. Hindi ko nagustuhan but of course this is subjective. Pwedeng magustuhan nyo naman yung itsura nito and hindi nyo nagustuhan yung Xiaomi 12T from last year. And then pangalawa, yung camera nito, it's a little bit underwhelming for something that is branded with a Leica partnership. Mas okay pa para sa akin yung camera ng Xiaomi 12 Pro with the same image sensor. And meron pang 4K 60fps yon So kung camera ang habol nyo, I would say get that instead. Mas mura pa yon I think, right now. So kung makahanap kayo nun and mas mababa yung presyo nun dito, that is something that I would highly recommend kung camera-centric usage. And then number three, yung fast charging natin, it went from 120 watts from last year down to 67 watts again this year. So that is not a wise decision para sa akin kung value ng pera ang hinahanap nyo, kung gusto nyo ng sulit na phone and gusto nyo ng T-series talaga ng Xiaomi, then the Xiaomi 12T is a better choice or even the Xiaomi 12T Pro kung mahanap nyo at almost the same price dito sa Xiaomi 13T. At para naman sa mga recommendations ko as an alternative to the Xiaomi 13T, number one sa choices natin, itong Poco F5 Pro. Kung makuha nyo to at the sale price, discounted, this is a better option. Meron kayong 4K 60fps, a better chipset. Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, very capable and powerful. 
And I appreciate na hindi pretentious na may Leica. Yung camera nitong Poco F5 Pro is just a very decent. Sometimes you can get even good quality photos depending on the lighting, depending on the framing, of course. So, nakadepende lahat po yan sa inyo kung gaano kaganda yung makukuha yung photos dito. This is a very capable phone pagdating sa camera. And then, kung gusto mo naman makatipid pero better pa rin yung performance than the Xiaomi 13T, you already have the Poco F5. Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 is more powerful than the MediaTek Dimensity 8200. Pero para sa akin guys, kung ultimate value ang habol nyo, this is the one. Redmi K60 Ultra. Meron ng napakalakas na chipset and merong IP68 na water and dust resistance. It gets 4 years of OS updates, 5 years of security patches. Solid na solid na option to for you. Kung nagtitipid kayo and open-minded kayo, okay lang sa inyo gumamit ng China ROM na device. Now, para sa mga magtatanong, wala pong problema sa paggamit ng China ROM devices here in the Philippines. The only downside is that wala tayong official warranty sa Philippines. Kung magkaburilyasi yung phone nyo, well, kailangan nyo magpa-repair and magbabayad kayo or pwede nyo i-claim yung store warranty dyan sa seller. Anyway, lahat po ng recommendations ko, ililink ko po dyan sa description box para lang makasigurado kayo na 100% authentic yung pagbibilhan nyo. Na kung gusto mo pang matuto tungkol sa mga phones, nandito po yung best cameras natin ngayon 2023 under 25,000 pesos. And then nandito naman po yung mga features na hindi gimmick. Nandito po yung collaboration natin with other tech YouTubers. So hanggang sa susunod, ako nga pala ulit si Janus ng Pinoy Tech Dad. Kita-kita ulit tayo. Yeah, you got me